what's up guys, Andy here, and today we're reviewing over Black Clover episode 80 titled Special Little Brother vs. Failed Big Brother. Now, I want to go ahead and say this now, this is my favorite episode of the entire series. Uh, I, it might just be because I'm a huge Finroll fan, but this episode had everything. We got a little bit of backstory, we got the entire fight, and then we got some more backstory kind of setting up some stuff that will be happening later on down the road. Now, I don't know if they're going to continue upon this next episode. It kind of looked like they were in the little recap thing at the end. But, uh, <laughs> I hope they do. Uh, then again, I hope they kind of wait and, like, play it out a little bit longer, to be honest. But I don't know. Uh, there was a scene in here that literally had me so hyped that I, I was literally, like, going crazy. But, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. As you can tell from the thumbnail... Finroll and Longress are going at it. Uh, I don't think anyone really kind of knew the extent of what they were going to actually do, though, because they went over and beyond what uh, what was expected of them. So, uh, yeah, without further delay, gang, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if y'all do end up enjoying the video or you just want to help the channel grow in general. But that's probably about it for this intro, because I really want to talk about this episode something fierce. So let's get right into it. So we start our episode off pretty paranormal with our little bit of recap here with Kirish getting his comeuppings from last episode. We jump straight into our intro, and then we immediately get into Finroll. So, Vanessa's combing his hair, and he's like, Thank you, Vanessa. And then they all start talking about, you know, like, You got this, bro. You got this. And Luck, I love Luck and Magna. They're, they're just great. Because Luck tells him, he's like, Yeah, don't lose like Magna did. And Magna's like, Yeah, don't lose like, Wait, the hell did you say to me? So, uh, it was, it was really cute, and... You could see everybody was there, and then they said, I know that the captain's not here, he's probably thinking about you, and he's like, you better go uh, over and beyond your limits, <laughs> um, and he's taking his shit, and he's like, this one's gonna be a killer, I thought I told him to stock that toilet paper, but nonetheless, we get into the fight here. We have Leopold, Hammond, and Finral versus Seki, Longris, and Fragile, or Fraggle. I don't know how to say her name, but she actually has really cool magic, but... It really doesn't matter too much because we we start the fight off immediately with them using the same tactic as they did last time with Seki just riding him straight up to their uh, crystal. So uh, they're heading over there and we start we cut into a backstory of how um, pretty much Finroll was abused by his stepmother. She was telling him, you know, you're like you're not my real child, so I don't love you as much, and you're not as good. And then we meet this character. Keep this character in mind. Her name is Finnis Kamrik, or Kamrik. I don't know. But uh, just keep her in mind, because she's going to play a huge part in the series, I feel like. Because she is Longris's bride right now. And she was supposed to be Finral's, and, you know, he says, Who do you think you are, dull woman? Because she said that, you know, Finral's, you're, you're much kinder, you're a wonderful mage. And you're pretty much a better person than your brother. Back when she just found out that, you know, Finral wasn't going to be her husband-to-be because she thought that he was. But, you know, he's not the head of the house or he's not the next in line because it's his little brother. So we cut back over to real life time and we find out that when spatial magic collides, they cancel out. So this is going to be uh, his plan to beat Longris. Which, it kind of works for a little while because the spatial magic is kind of useless. But he uses his to send, you know, Hammond and Leopold off to their crystal. And they meet Fraggle who uses snow magic. And the spell she uses is Phantom Snow Garden which puts people to sleep. But we find out that that training arc wasn't for nothing because Leopold used his mana skin to be able to kind of keep it off of him. And he attacked her and he hit, he hit it. Which, I don't, they never expanded upon the extent of that battle, which I'm pretty sure we'll get next episode, but then we cut back over to the king here and the wizard king, and they're saying, a spatial magic battle, you don't see that every day, and the king's like, oh, so this is Finesse's uh, husband or something like that. I can't remember what he said. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, he, he then uses this spell called Spatial Magic Fallen Angel's Wing Beat. 
Now, what this spell does is it's pretty much his normal spell, but it's a homing spell that transports enemies to random locations. So, Seki got sent off to uh, the captain's toilet. And we see this scene, and this is where everything kind of starts uh, going downhill, because, like... He says, I'm going to start using my grimoire now, and he starts slowly losing his grip on Sandy. As you can see, his face blurs. And they all recognized this magic power before. It was from that one girl whose name I cannot remember right now, but she had the lizard thing that turned into the dragon or whatever. But uh, Finroll tells him, he's like, Longer, stop it. If you keep this up, I have a feeling that you won't be you anymore. Which, you can tell they're building this up to where he's he's not a good person he's not a good person at all but we cut over to some more backstory and he's like mother and father are kind to me because I'm better than you but why are you nice to me too because he he came in he's like you want to go to a festival and he just kind of was like hmm and that's when he said he said something along the lines of if I lose to you, then they won't love me anymore, or something like that. And he, he just lost full control. And he went for the kill shot, and this was the scene I was talking about. The match was over, he broke their crystal, they won, and then he went for the death shot, and that's when everybody stepped in, and oh my god. And it wasn't just these three either, it wasn't just Magna, Luck, and Asta. But Luck tells him, he's like, forget the match, we'll kill you. Like, he's like, we will kill you, and everyone has this hatred in their eyes, like, the match was over, dude, you, you're taking this way too far, if you want to fight, we can go, and, you know, everyone tells them, it, it, everyone is mad, like, you can even see here, you actually pissed me off, like, legitimately, everyone is on his ass right now, and that's the end of the episode, because Finroll is laying there in a pile of his own blood with holes in him, and Noel even says... If this, if, if he doesn't get help, he, he's he's gone pretty much. And, you know, Finral can't die here, I don't think. But if he does, holy shit. Uh, but we move on to our Clover clip because that was the end of the episode and it was titled Hairstyle. This along with this episode is my favorite Clover clip. Uh, <clears throat> let's talk about it a minute. So, uh, they're basically all going through picking out their own hairstyles, and, you know, Noelle wants them to look like Asta, uh, pretty much just some crazy shit here. I, I, I just found this one, like, really repetitively funny, but, uh, the captain came in, and he's like, this is the hairstyle for when you go beyond your limits, and it's Super Saiyan, so... That was pretty funny, but, you know, overall, the episode really kind of took away from this clip because it was so impactful, and, you know, I'll get a picture to put at the end of, uh, Longris, Longris, uh, Finral laying in a pile of his own blood because I forgot to get the picture in the heat of the moment, and that, that, you really need to see that scene, but he says, when it comes to me in this series, my hair should be the least of your worries, which was a very powerful scene. But uh, I'll go ahead and throw that picture up right now. Give me one second, gang, and then uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll discuss that for a minute. All right. So as you can see here, he's going for the kill shot. He's got his hand up, about to use his spatial magic, and they cut over to this guy who says, "You know, hey, the match is over. Stop." And you just see Finro lying there. As you can see, he's got holes in him. He's covered in blood. The explosion between the two that you can see in the thumbnail really, really did him in. Uh, he he didn't stand a chance against his brother's magic power, but he still he still stood there and put up the fight. Which I, I don't know what happened with Leopold and Hammond, but I think that they're gonna review this back and see that you know it was a draw or that Finrol's team won because he held him off long enough for Leopold to overcome Fragile because. She used snow, and he had that mana skin, and that wasn't affecting him at all. And he could just rampage on that thing. But Plus, Hammond was there, and Hammond's not a pushover himself, I don't think, anyway. So, he should be able to do something. Seki was, you know, rendered useless, pretty much. But, yeah. Uh, love this episode overall, gang. I know I kind of did this one a little bit longer than all the other ones, and that's why it's taken so long. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I just loved it so much. But anyway, if y'all did enjoy this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch y'all next time. Peace out.